day everybody hello hello as always i just want to quickly share this into my group even though it appears that ugh, facebook is so slow today so slow if you're watching the replay hashtag replay me and let's see if i can inspire you today Because this is one of those things that I hear so many women talking about, right? Imposter syndrome. And I have to say, it used to freak me the fuck out as well. <laughs> but then, as I always do, I just decided to question and reframe for myself that which feels really empowering. So I've just dropped the link in for Clearance to Clarity. If you want to join us, then you can. But today, let's talk about imposter syndrome and why I actually don't believe that it is a negative or a bad emotion. So, first off, none of your emotions are ever bad, ever. Every single emotion that you have is in service to you. And all of your emotions just give you messages. So, Next time that you kind of like in any situation and you're feeling an emotion. In fact, this is such a beautiful exercise to do. Set a reminder on your phone for like every hour for two days. And every hour you just connect and you go, what is the actual emotion that I'm feeling right now? Without judging it, without making it good or bad, just that check in with what is the actual emotion that I'm feeling right now and what you'll start understanding is that there is such a kaleidoscope of emotions available to us and what I have learned through the work of Abraham Hicks is it's all just kind of like a little indication to me of am I thinking the same thoughts as what my higher self is thinking or am I moving away from my absolute truth now, imposter syndrome, like, oh, bless their little souls, everything else, um, like in the emotional experience, is a perfectly natural emotion that has been put into a little box with a pretty little label on, and so people can make sense of how they feel and not feel shame around it, and oh my god, there's something wrong because I feel like an imposter. Every time that I walk into a room that's full of people that actually matter in some way to me. And when I say matter in some way to me, I'm not talking about um, a personal relationship, right? We don't feel imposter syndrome around our family and friends. We tend to feel imposter syndrome when we are amongst our peers, amongst the people in the industry who whose, value, whose um, input we value, who has got a, a good reputation and we actually admire them and we kind of inspire a little bit to be like them. What Whatever the case might be or it could just be in a room full of people and maybe you're the speaker and you you constantly have this feeling of oh my god what if they ask me a question that I don't know what if they ask me something and I don't have the answer and then all of a sudden everybody's going to think that I'm an imposter that I don't know what I'm talking about and that I shouldn't be in the position that I'm in so first off you know live in integrity is what I'm going to say to you. Live with integrity. Like, don't pretend to be something that you're not. But when you are living in integrity and you have that feeling, what I've come to realize, it's always because whatever the topic is that I'm discussing or the, the company is that I'm in, it's, it matters to me. It actually matters to me. It's like when I was a dancer as a child and I danced from about the age of Five until I smashed my knees when I was 18. There was not a single performance where I stood waiting for the curtain to go up where I didn't have butterflies. And I always thought, oh my God, surely at some stage this has to go. And I was reading some autobiographies of the greatest ballerinas of the world and they all said they have butterflies before every single audition or every single performance. 
and then I was like, oh, it's normal. We have butterflies regardless of how long we've been doing this for, you know, or on what stages we are performing or whatever the case might be. So the butterflies is just, oh, this really matters to me. I really want to give my best in this. And imposter syndrome is exactly the same. Imposter syndrome just tells me like, wow, this shit matters to me and I want to gift my absolute best to people. Hey, darling. Right? And that's the thing. I love the butterflies. I feel like if I stop having the butterflies, then, you know, then it's time to change direction. <laughs> it's time to go and do something else. It's like so many times I hear people saying they don't want to do Facebook lives or they don't want to write blogs or they don't want to make videos or go on a stage or whatever because they're so nervous. Well, why wouldn't you be nervous? Why wouldn't you kind of go, oh God, I really just want to give my best here. This matters to me and of course I'm nervous, but do you see how all of these emotions, these really powerful reactions that we have inside of us has somehow been sneakily turned against us? Like people start thinking if I'm afraid or if I'm nervous or if I feel like, you know, maybe I'm not going to have the answer or whatever the case might be. They're using that as an excuse not to show up instead of going, I'm going to move into the fear, I'm going to move into the discomfort, I'm going to move into the imposter syndrome because I know that that is where whatever is really important to me has got growth potential. Now I'm going to say this to you guys with love as well. Everybody feels it. Every single high achiever that I have ever come across will tell you that when they're in their zone, when they're amongst their peers, all of them feel like, oh, am I good enough to be in this company? Like, you know, do, do I even belong here? There's not a single high achiever who doesn't experience that. And so for me, that was just another really powerful acknowledgement that as a high achiever, this shit is normal. Like if we stopped feeling all of these things, we would probably be like all those other people who just couldn't give a rat's ass of how they appear to others or, you know, how they, they show up in their zone of genius, in their passion topic, almost, I want to say to you. And then when I started understanding, the more I dove into the work of Abraham X, it's like the more powerful that emotion is, the more my higher self disagrees with me. So with other words, the more nervous I am, like maybe I'm going to screw this up, the more confident my higher self is in like, you got this girl. This is like, this is it. This is where you're meant to be. This is where you will shine. So... I have just taken everything negative about imposter syndrome and I have turned it around to be in service of me, like all emotions. And so that is really why I wanted to talk about this topic today. It's time for you to reclaim your power by going into all those little areas of discomfort and then questioning it for yourself. Now, I just decided at some stage I was no longer going to listen to all the experts. I was no longer going to believe everything that everybody else is believing if it feels disempowering to me. Really, I am all for empowering people to take back all of themselves. I honestly feel like we are mind blowingly powerful. And we have to start realizing that the majority of the system is all around disempowering us, giving us disempowering beliefs so that we can feed the system, right? And the current system that is still in power is all about minions. They want little workers because that is what feeds the whole thing. 
And that is coming to an end. And I honestly believe that is why so many of us are finally sitting up and paying attention and go, whoa, 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 whoa. No, actually, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. It doesn't feel badass to me. And alphas are pretty badass. You know that, right? You know that. That's why you're in my space. Because we are here to actually start questioning and to start going. We get to choose new beliefs and we get to choose our labels and we get to choose what we do with the labels that are already in existence. For me, if it doesn't actually feed me, if it doesn't actually give me the motivation and the confidence and the belief in myself that I can be, do and have anything that I desire, then I choose not to believe it as my truth. Now, I understand that a lot of people still need to hold on to those. And that's perfect for where they are in their journey as well. But my question to you today, Alpha, is when you listen to the labels that are being given to you, things like imposter syndrome, does it feel empowering to you or does it feel disempowering to you? And then how can you turn it around so that you can use it as part of your fuel? Maybe it is reframing it for yourself that when I feel like an imposter, it means because the shit really matters to me. Or when I feel like an imposter, it means that my higher self absolutely disagrees with me. She thinks I'm an expert. She knows that I am an expert in my life. And, you know, thank God that we are living in a time when more and more people want to learn from us, not because of our academic knowledge, but because of our life experience. Isn't that beautiful? And so when we start just being more and more, um, you know, aware of ourselves and what's going on in here and working on ourselves to be our continuous growth inducing best selves and we then just show up and give other people permission to do the same for them, that is when we start making the biggest impact in the world. I always say, I do not speak gospel truth for everybody. What I do is I share my truth. And it's such a privilege and I'm so humbled by how many people are resonating with my truth and my journey and what I share with them. But it's definitely not everybody. I was on a call with an incredible woman yesterday. Oh my God, it was so magic. And we were talking about the fact that both of us do not have the gazillions of people commenting on our stuff, but I get a lot of private messages of people thanking me for, you know, what it is that I put out there. And I said to her, but for me, that is so powerful. The fact that people don't want to publicly thank us means this is powerful stuff that we are sharing. And it's so controversial that people really don't understand how we can live without shame, how we can live from a space of true love and respect and appreciation and acceptance. Majority of people just haven't done the work to get to that space. So this is a good thing for me. But every single person that does resonate and that I don't expect them to give me public applause, but when they do resonate and I just create a moment of introspection for them so that they can sit down and go, wow, okay, maybe there is a different way for me to approach this. Maybe there is a different perspective that I can get on this that will have me take more aligned action faster and more powerful so that I can start creating a life on my own terms so that I can define what success would feel like for me and what that would look like for me and what my dreams are like for me without comparison or trying to think that I have to compete with anybody else. 
those days for women like us are coming to an end. How fabulous is that? That we don't have to compete anymore. That we don't have to compare anymore. That the more authentic we are showing up, the more we are attracting authentic people into our experiences and they don't all have to be the same as us. I can appreciate people who are completely different from me. I get to play with people who are very similar to me just because they like the style of my, my play, right? They like the style of my coaching. They like my approach, my, my take charge approach to life. It's just who I prefer working with, who I have most fun working with. But it doesn't mean I can't appreciate everybody. In fact, I probably appreciate more people than anybody else on the planet because I just completely look at their souls and all I see is love in other human beings, regardless of some of the actions that they take from a space of pain and fear. So I'd love to hear from you. What is your big takeaway from today? In fact, as it is Friday and we've done like a whole week of these trainings, what has been your biggest aha this week? Because if I can give you one huge aha every single week, that's 50 new insights a year. That's pretty bloody spectacular if you ask me, even if you don't have a huge aha every single day. So let me know in the comments, what is your big aha this week? What is that one thing that you just kind of went, whoa, okay, that is something that I'm going to start doing differently from this point forward. And I also want to know by next week, how is it starting to transform your life? I think that would be really, really beautiful to see. And if you don't want to put it in public forum, that's perfect too. You can always private message me because this shit really does matter to me. I'm not doing this just to be on camera, even though I look very pretty today with my hair, if I have to say so myself. And it's because I was out on my bike this morning. So um, it was an amazing ride. Did you guys see on my Facebook story? Oh, I got to see the most incredible sunrise over the ocean and everything was pink, my favorite color. <laughs> so that was just magic for me. So let me know guys and then also if there's any specific things you want me to talk about, if there's anything in your life going on right now where you just kind of think if there's just another way for me to look at this, is there an, is another approach for me to take this, it would make such a big difference in everything then let me know as well. You could also either put that down in the comments or private message me or drop me a mail, anal at analbester.com. And I'd love to do any trainings that you guys um, request from me. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I really hope this has been valuable. I have put the link in for Clearance to Clarity. I'm so excited about that program. If it's speaking to you, I'd love to have you in it. We are starting in two weeks time and um, have a spectacular weekend, darlings. It's Friday afternoon here. I'm taking some time off with my boys, watching some movies, eating some popcorn, going on longer rides over the weekend and just recharging my battery so I can be back next week in full service to you. Be safe wherever you are in the world and never forget, only death is inevitable. Thriving is always the choice of the alpha. Live with honor. Cheers.